Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Los Panos Talk. My name is Justin Collins. Tonight's episode, I think, is going to be very informative and useful to the public. We're going to talk about a recent COVID-19 update that came from the Los Panos Memorial Hospital. Dr. Yu presented a presentation to the Los Panos City Council on September 1st, 2021, and he gave a lot of interesting and useful information. The intent of this video isn't to alarm you at all. It's just to simply give you the facts of what's going on. Some of this information will probably put you at ease and some of the information might make you a little uncomfortable. But ultimately, I think it's important for you to know and I think it's something you'd like to know. So if you want to find out how COVID-19 is affecting us here locally and what the doctors are reporting seeing here at the local hospital and clinics, then stay tuned and we'll get into all of that information in just a moment, right after a brief message from our sponsor. And we're back. Thanks for watching. So once again, like I said, on September 1st, 2021, Dr. Philip Yu gave a presentation to the Los Panos City Council. And I'm going to be sharing with you various clips from that meeting. So I'm not to put words in anybody's mouth, but I'll also be quoting him directly. This is not my opinion, and I'm not going to be giving you uh, really national data, etc. There are some times where he does. But I'm really just going to focus on local, what's going on, and I'm not going to put uh, any opinions or anything like that into this. I'm simply going to just tell you what was conveyed. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this is a screenshot from the meeting, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what he said, and I'm going to summarize it. I took notes, and the reason is because some of it kind of dragged on, and I want to get to the main points. So what he said about this is that we are basically in week five of the surge. But again, he gave this on September 1st. So if you do the math, we're now at actually week eight of the surge. And what is the surge? He's referring to basically a spike in COVID-19 cases. And he gives his reasons as to why. Largely, it seems to be, uh, according to him, the Delta variant. And he also seems to blame uh, kids going back to school. He reiterated and made it clear that we actually currently have sufficient ventilators, PPE, medications, and equipment. So that might make you feel a lot better. And to quote him, he said that the ED is, quote, extremely busy. And he said that it also was, quote, at pre-pandemic levels, which is about 90 to 100 patients per day. So he's saying now we have about 90 to 100 patients per day. And prior to the pandemic started, we had about 90 to 100 patients per day. I found this interesting because it sounds like our daily average is considered extremely uh, busy, which is even more evidence to something that many of us have been saying, which is that our hospital is inadequate for a population size. And so I thought that was interesting that he say this because that is even more direct proof of that claim. Recently, they brought on extra staff in the form of traveler nurses to help with the surge. And he said that additional staff was needed to handle the increase in COVID-19 patients and also because of the increase in medical staff themselves getting sick. And he reminded us that medical staff are 
kind of more vulnerable really to the various diseases or whatever that's going on because they're on the front lines of it. And so one of the things that makes them lower in staffing is just simply the fact that many of them are going to catch it themselves. And that's something I think a lot of us don't think about, but it's uh, important to think about. He said that the hospital right now is seeing, quote, easily at least 100 patients per day. And he also said that the rural health clinic is focused on giving vaccine doses and has plenty of vaccine doses on hand for anybody who would want one. He also reminded us that other diseases haven't taken a break and they are seeing an increase, interestingly, in heart failure and people improperly managing their diabetes. He also explained that the picture on top is not the hospital is not our hospital. This is not a local picture at all. In fact, this is a stock photo, but he said, quote, this could be our hospital, end quote. And about the picture on bottom, he explained it, and I'll let him use his own words. Um, and the picture down below the burning house um, with the um, uh, jogger walking by with the stroller, um, that's actually a little bit of how, how we feel right now, because uh, the the hospital itself is constantly busy. We have been working extra shifts. Um, uh, a lot of staff are, are extremely tired. Um, morale is uh, at times low because we have seen a lot of this pandemic uh, firsthand. You can go to the next slide, please. So that's our current situation. Now for the next slide, I'm gonna summarize this because once again, there was kind of a little bit of extra information and I'm going to condense it down for you. So what he said about this slide essentially was that uh, he said that this was quote shocking to him because he's quote, he is used to seeing influenza deaths and on this graph, but influenza deaths look more like molehills compared to COVID, which looks like Mount Everest now, end quote. Now, this is actually national data. This is not uh, Los Panos, but essentially what he was trying to convey is the little yellow humps there or what would usually be seen from flu. Uh, the blue humps are what is seen from COVID alone. And then the red line, which is referred to as PIC, Councilwoman Deborah Lewis asked about this, and it stands for pneumonia, influenza, and COVID combined. So as you can see, the red line um, is very close in most of the cases to the uh, blue area, meaning that the contribution overall to the deaths is primarily covid and influenza and pneumonia are lesser contributing factors, but still are adding to the number of overall deaths. He said something interesting about pediatric cases being on the rise, and I'm going to just allow you to listen to what he said himself. Um, I put this slide in here. Um, this is influenza-like illnesses. We know that there's almost no influenza going around. So basically, most of this is covid we are also seeing a resurgence of a couple of other viruses. One of them is well known to children called respiratory syncytial virus or RSV. Um, that is starting to also take off. But the key here is that over the last few weeks, uh, and you can see into week 30, what's called week 31 of the um, CDC's guide, uh, um, graphic, um, starting somewhere around actually week 10, there was an influx or increase in the number of pediatric uh, influenza-like illness cases. These are almost all due to COVID. Um, you can also see since about week 26, um, an in, uh, a gradual increase in the 25 to 24, 25 to 49, all basically all age groups have started to climb back up um, with uh, influenza-like illness again. This is not influenza. These are the likely COVID patients um, displaying uh, symptoms because it is all very similar. Um, but the, the shocking part for me was that uh, pediatric age group um, uh, that's been going up. That is the age group, of course, that cannot be immunized at this point. Um, so uh, I, and that's what you would expect. But also the impact that I wanted to point out is that children have now returned to school. Um, we know that every August, September, October, um, childhood illnesses, infectious diseases go up naturally because children are now commingling, mixing 
in, uh, in the school setting. Um, and we should expect that. But that also means that they'll bring it home. And, uh, and so we're watching for that as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so what's going on in our county? Um, and uh, I know you guys are probably familiar with the uh, public health site. Um, so I'm not going to focus on uh, everything on this graph. Um, I do want to focus on a couple things, the um, percent of fully vaccinated individuals. And the reason why that is actually a big uh, marker for us in, in healthcare is because um, at 34.8, that means about 60, uh, 65, 66% are, are not vaccinated. Um, that is the potential uh, for us to uh, see patients. Um, so at a fairly low vaccination rate in the county means that we'll have more cases in the hospital. Um, vaccines have clearly shown uh, to, number one, reduce the, the uh, disease. Number two, more importantly, for, from my, uh, my selfish perspective, it reduces the um, risk that somebody will need to be uh, in the emergency room and subsequently significantly reduces the risk uh, that someone will need to be hospitalized. Currently, you may have heard that the pandemic that we're experiencing or the surge that we're experiencing now is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. I will tell you that is exactly true. Um, uh, of our patients, approximately about 89% that are admitted to the hospital are unvaccinated. Of the 11% that are vaccinated, their disease is much milder. They wind up getting out after a few days. We just wanna bring them in, give them some medications, make sure that they don't progress. Of our mortalities, which have suddenly spiked, uh, and I must tell you, they aren't the 75 year olds anymore. The first go around, we, we had a lot of 65, 75 um, year olds with multiple comorbidities. The average day for me um, and for our staff is that each week we're coding, uh, I'm sorry, um, we're uh, seeing two or three um, 45, 39, 52-year-olds who have a lot of life in front of them um, come in deathly ill and, and code. Um, by code, I mean die. Um, so that has become our reality. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, and that's what we are actually seeing in-house on a regular daily basis. So to recap, some of the stuff that he was saying, which I think that we really should have picked up on and probably did, is that unlike before, it's not just elderly. It's not just people 75. They're actually seeing here in our local hospital people dying in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. And he was saying that they're dying now at a higher rate at about two to three per week. He also says later on in this presentation that they have up to this point in entirety have had 56 deaths here at the Los Panos Memorial Hospital. That's not counting other clinics, but that's counting at the hospital. Out of those deaths, 14 of which have occurred in the last five weeks. So you can do the math and think about it, but basically that's a pretty big spike in deaths that have happened very recently. And of course the argument is, is that this is due to the Delta variant. Now he goes into more detail as to the Delta variant, the differences, but there was something interesting that he brought up that I thought was useful for uh, you to know. So once again, this is a screenshot from the slide. I'll just break it down for you simple. It was rather interesting. So R0 is the uh, terminology and the word, it's a value system. So uh, five would be the R0 of Delta and three would be the R0 of the Alpha variant. What R0 means is basically how many people that you are expected to infect if you yourself was to get infected with this variant. So it's basically a measure of how infectious 
something is. He gave us a baseline and he said influenza has an R0 value of about 1.3. So to give you an idea of how infectious it is. Now, interestingly, these numbers are actually based on the fact that the United States is largely vaccinated. So these numbers don't really apply, actually, if a large population is not vaccinated or if you're in an area with low vaccination rates like ours, which is in the 30 percentile range. He explains in this presentation and on this slide that uh, an r naught value for an area or a person who's unvaccinated is actually about 7 to 10. So what was interesting is that if you're not vaccinated, you actually spread the disease for twice as long. You're contagious for about twice the amount of time and you spread it to about double the amount of people. And on top of that, your likelihood of being hospitalized according to the Los Banos data only. I'm not going by national data. I'm just talking about what's occurred here in front of our face. Out of the uh, cases he's had, he was saying 89% was unvaccinated and 11% was vaccinated at terms of hospitalized. So that essentially means that your odds would likely be about nine times uh, greater than if you were vaccinated based on that math and that math alone. Fully vaccinated people can still spread the virus, but they do so for a much shorter amount of time. So in other words, half as contagious. I found this interesting because I've often heard the argument on social media, if I can still spread the virus with the vaccine, then why should I get the vaccine? And how does me getting the vaccine help you if I can still spread the virus with the vaccine? Well, here's your answer. One, you save up hospital resources for people by being less likely to go to the hospital, according to the data we just saw. And the other reason that it helps everybody actually is because you're half as likely to spread it to other people and would statistically spread it to half as many people. So yes, you are still capable of spreading the virus, the Delta variant, even if you're vaccinated. This is fact. This is true. But it's 50% less. I'm not going to guilt you or encourage you to even get the vaccine. I'm not doing that with this. Instead, I'm just simply giving you the facts and what is happening here in the town and what the data suggests. So take it or leave it. You're entitled to your own opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. These are the facts. You can take it for what it's worth or not. That's up to you. But if me sharing these facts with you has offended you, don't expect an apology and feel free to write your nasty, angry comment in the comment section below. Now, another question, which I think is something that we obviously would want to know and was asked in the meeting was, how many cases are you seeing of COVID-19, right? He said, so basically, the answer was this from Dr. Yu. They get about 100 to 90 patients per day. Out of those, about 40 to 30 of them are screened as being possibly COVID cases. Now, out of those 30 to 40, they have a positivity rate of about 13 to 20 percent. Now, I know those are pretty big swings and it's not a specific number. Don't worry. I did the math for you. So... I took the averages of the numbers that he was giving out. And so the average of 30 and 40 is, of course, 35, along with the average of 13 and 20 being 16.5 or 16 and a half. I then calculated what 16.5% is of 35. And the answer rounded to the nearest tenth is 5.8. So in other words, about six people test positive for covid every day at the Los Bonos Memorial Hospital, but that is not including the other clinics in the city. That's only speaking to Los Bonos Memorial Hospital. Someone else asked about the local mortality rate from COVID-19, and he said that he didn't have the answer offhand. He did say that it is something that they do, in fact, track and that he would later provide. But what he could tell us at that specific time was hard numbers. And what he told us was that there have been 56 COVID deaths at the Los Banos Memorial Hospital. 
And out of those deaths, 14 of them have occurred in the last five weeks, with, which brings us to a total of 56. So don't add the 14 to the 56. It's 56, and then 14 of which has occurred in the last five weeks. And of course, now it's actually been eight weeks. And so, of course, that number is higher, but this is as of September 1 of this year. And if you do the math and you divide uh, 14 over 56, what you come to is a very even 0.25, meaning that 25% of all of the pandemic-related deaths have actually happened in the last five weeks as of September 1. And the chart was trending in the upward direction. And he attributed this to one being the Delta variant and two schools opening back up to in-person learning. Now, while he made those claims, technically you can't really prove it because you can't isolate the individual variables. But in reality, the thing is, is that life is kind of messy and it's often impossible to run uh, lab type experiments and where we could uh, test it with only school opening or test it with only Delta or test it with only mask and unmask. So the reality is, is that type of single variable scientific method, which would be convenient and we'd love to do, is not actually practical in real life. And we have to just go with what we see but keep in mind, correlation doesn't necessarily always mean causation. But again, it is a pretty logical uh, statement to make that it's due to going back to school because not only the timing, but also because, like he said, they usually see spikes in other illnesses in years past due to school opening. And so it would make sense that COVID-19 would be no different. So once again, the point of Los Panos talk is to give you facts and not fear. And I hope that this didn't uh, make you afraid because it didn't make uh, me afraid. I have no intention of scaring you or anything like that. There is some good news to all this that one, they have enough PPE and that they have enough ventilators and that they've hired additional staff and that they're on top of it. So overall, I mean, it's, there is some reasons to feel, um, you know, safe. I'm not trying to make you feel scared. I'm just simply letting you know what was said at the meeting, what the last COVID-19 brief was and to let you know what our local hospital is dealing with. And basically what Dr. Yu is asking of people is to continue social distancing, wear the masks, and also he's asking for more people to get vaccinated because this helps uh, reduce fatigue and makes it easier for the hospital to handle the cases and keeps beds and ventilators open for more people. So those are the things that basically our local community leaders and our local uh, medical leader, if you will, are essentially asking from us. So do it or don't. It's your body. It's your choice. I'm just the messenger. And if you are upset with me, then leave your angry, nasty comment below. If you haven't already, please like, follow, and subscribe to Los Panos Talk. And I also want to let you know that you can subscribe to LosPanosTalk.com, get all my videos uh, straight to your email address, so you don't have to worry about the Facebook algorithm or Instagram newsfeed uh, delivering you the content that you need. Instead, you'll get it sent straight to your email, and you'll never miss a moment. You can also go and look through past videos in a very easy and organized way on the website as well. And there's also a mobile app that you can download totally for free. Once again, my name is Justin Collins and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. <music>